my topic for today is oral mucous membrane development function division and prosthodontic consolidation these are my contents introduction oral mucous membrane is defined as a moist lining of gastrointestinal tract nasal passages and other body cavities that communicate with the exterior in the oral cavity this lining is called as oral mucous membrane or oral mucosa development uh, for, um, formation of primitive oral cavity from the fusion of embryonic ectoderm and uh, from embryonic stromodium and foregut occurs by the rapture of buccopharyngeal membrane on 26 day. Thus, this lining is formed by uh, endoderm and ectoderm. Tongue epiglottis pharynx are derived from endoderm, while palate, cheek, and gingiva are derived from ectoderm. Gestation period. On 5th to 6th week, a, a single layer of cell lining the primitive oral cavity has formed into two cell layers. Uh, on 7th week, the lingual epithelium shows specialization, that is formation of circumvallate and foliate papilla first and then formation of fungiform papilla. On 8th week, significant thickening occurs in the region of vestibular dental lamina complex. In the center of this thickening, cellular degeneration occurs, resulting in separation of cells covering the cheek and alveolar mucosa, giving rise to oral vestibule on 10th to 14th week. Palatal shelves elevate and close in between 8 to 12 week. Uh, in 8 to 11th week, 8 to 12 week, capillary bird uh, collagen fibers are formed and gradually increase in numbers and bundles. Lining and masticatory mucosa show stratification in between 10 to 12 week. Appearance of keratohyaline granule, melanocyte, and Langer hen cells uh, occurs on in between 10 to 20 week. In between 10 to 20, uh, 17 to 20 week, elastic fibers in connective tissue and lining mucosa become prominent. Functions of oral mucosa. First function is the pro uh, protection. Uh, oral mucosa protects the deeper tissue from the mechanical forces and surface abrasion from the hard palate and mastication. Defense. Oral mucosa uh, prevents the entry of microorganisms. It is impermeable to the bacterial toxins and secret antibodies and humoral and cell mediated immunity. Lubrication. Uh, salivary gland keeps the oral cavity moist, which helps in uh, speech mastication. Sensation. Oral mucosa is sensitive to touch, temperature, pressure, and uh, tongue is covered with taste buds for, and various reflexes are generated like swallowing, gagging, retching, and salivation. Or, uh, organization of oral mucosa. Oral mucosa is divided into two parts, that is vestibule and oral cavity proper. And oral cavity proper. The vestibule is bounded by lips and cheeks, and the oral cavity proper is separated from vestibule by gingiva and alveolar bone. The super, uh, hard palate and soft palate forms the superior border of the oral cavity proper, while the base of the tongue, floor of the mouth forms the inferior border. Posterior border is formed by pillars of fossa and tonsil. Components of oral mucosa. Oral mucosa is composed of three layers, that is oral epithelium, lamina propria, and submucosa. Uh, epithelium. The oral ep epithelium is stratified squamous epithelium. It can be keratinized or non-keratinized. Keratinized layer can be of two types, that is orthokeratinized, which contains, uh, it doesn't contain nuclei in the superficial cells, while parakeratinized, pycnotic or small nuclei is present. The epithelium, um, let's discuss about the histology. Epithelium maintains the integrity by continual renewal in which cells undergo various mitotic division as they migrate passively towards the surface from the base. This epithelium can be of two, uh, epithelial cells can be of two types, that is progenitor or ma maturator. Uh, progenitor cells divide and produce new cells, and maturation cells continuously differentiate and mature from the protective layer. The maturation can be of two types, that is keratinized, uh, keratinization and non-keratinization. Uh, in ke um, proliferation, the epithelium surface of the masticatory mucosa, example hard palate, gingiva, specialized mucosa, dorsum of the tongue, are covered with uh, keratinized mucosa. The basal cell layers of the keratinized mucosa are cuboidal, columnar in shape, and are present adjacent to the basal lamina. Prickle layer cells, these are elliptical and spherical in shape and synthesize proteins and give rise to new organelles. And as the, state, um, the cells migrate from stratum basale to the stratum spinosum, it increases in size. 
in stratum granulosum the formation of keratohyaline granules take place and as the cell uh, in proceeds from stratum spinosum to granulosum decrease in size takes place and superficial layer is a stratum corneum in this the absence of nucleus in if it is a orthokeratinized and there is a pycnotic nucleus is present if it is parakeratinized non keratinized mucosa the lining mucosa of the oral cavity that is lips buccal mucosa alveolar crest soft palate and underside of the tongue and floor of the mouth are made up of non keratinized mucosa the basal and preclusal cells layer simil are similar to the keratinized epithelium the intercellular bridge and preclusals are less prominent in case of non keratinized mucosa hence preclusal layer cell layer is called as intermediate layer the synthesis of glycogen takes place in between the intermediate layer and the superficial layer that uh, the stratum corneum it contains um, a plump nucleus junction of the epithelium and lamina propria the region where the connective tissue of the lamina propria meets the overlying epithelium this interface is consist of the reti uh, regions projected into the epithelium as shown in this diagram metabolic exchange between the connective tissue and epithelium occurs as epithelium don't have any blood vessels these junction appear as a stri uh, structureless layer on hematoxylin and eosin stain this junction is made up of two uh, zones that is lamina lucida and lamina densa this is a lamina densa and this is a lamina lucida lamina densa is a homogeneous finely fibrillar assembly of extracellular matrix separated from the adjacent cell by lamina lucida lamina lucida um, contains the protein that attaches cell to the basal lamina it contains co collagen 17 and integrin the anchorial fibers are um, made up of type 7 collagen and inserted into the lamina densa the genetic defects and autoimmune diseases uh, like um, diseases causes defect in the basal lamina while the lesions of pemphigoid separation epi, uh, pemphigoid separation of the epithelium takes place at the level of lamina lucida lamina propria the second layer of the epithelium is lamina propria the connective tissue supporting the oral epithelium is termed as lamina propria it is divided into two layers that is papillary layer which is closer to the epithelium and the reticular layer which is closer to the submucosa the cells uh, there are two contents of the lamina propria there are like cells and the fibers let's discuss about the cells present in the lamina propria first and there are fibroblasts fibroblasts are the cells uh, which helps in the uh, secretion and secretion of the fibers and ground substances histiocyte these are the spindle shaped cells and these are precursor for macrophages macrophages are the round pale staining nuclei they help in uh, process of the phagocytosis mast cell are the round and base, uh, has round and basophilic nucleus and helps in the secretion of inflammatory mediators like heparin and histamine PMN. These are round and lobe nuclear cells and helps uh, in the phagocytosis and cell killing. Lymphocytes are the round and dark staining nucleus uh, and take part in a humoral and cell mediated immunity. Plasma cell. These cells contain cartilage nucleus and helps in synthesis of immunoglobin. Then the second part of lamina propria is fibers. It contain collagen, elas uh, elastin fibers. Collagen is mostly type one, type three, type four, and type seven is present. Type five collagen can be seen in inflamed inflam tissue. Elastic fibers are mostly seen in uh, lining mucosa. These function to uh, they function as to restore the tissue after stretching. And the ground substance is made up of proteoglycans and glycoprotein. Sub mucosa. It, it is the most inferior part of the oral epithelium it is consist of connective tissue of various thickness it attaches the mucous membrane to underlying tissue it may be loose or firm its attachment to the uh, it is attached to the gland blood vessel nerve and adipose tissue structural variation oral mucosa is divided into lining mucosa masticatory mucosa and specialized mucosa the la lining mucosa constitute the largest percentage that is 60% of the area masticatory mucosa constitute for the 25% while specialized mucosa constitute for 15% soft palate ventral surface of the tongue floor of the mouth alveolar mucosa and labial and buccal mucosa considered as lining mucosa gingiva and hard palate are considered as masticatory mucosa while dorsal and lateral surface of the tongue are considered as specialized mucosa lining mucosa 
द लाइनिंग म्यूकोजा सॉफ्ट पैलेट has epithelium which is thin and non keratinized and contain test buds the connective tissue of the soft palate is highly vascular contain elastic fibers and in submucosa minor salivary glands are present uh, epithelium covering the oral uh, floor of the mouth is very thin it is non keratinized connective tissue is highly vascular contain elastic fibers and submucosa is fat and minor salivary glands are present oral epithelium covering labial and buccal mucosa is very thick and non keratinized and it is firmly attached to the underlying mucosa fat and minor salivary glands are present oral epithelium of the lips that is of vermilion border is thin and ortho keratinized and sub sebaceous glands are present in the sub mucosa lips intermediate zone is thin and para keratinized and in connective tissue elastic and collagen fibers are present masticatory mucosa gingiva is a part of oral mucosa Uh, that covers the alveolar process of the jaw and surrounds the neck of the teeth the epithelium of the masticatory mucosa is moderately thick and uh, normally para keratinized in the areas of gingiva it is immobile and bound firmly to the underlying tissue the or gingiva can be divided into marginal gingiva attached gingiva and inter and interdental gingiva aesthetic consideration of interdental papilla eliminating eliminating the black triangles in restoration uh, the recreation of the scallop architecture of papilla is very difficult uh, in difficult task in implantology a sound knowledge of the current implant positioning and various regenerative procedure is required for successful aesthetic outcome the um, for the recreation of the um, papilla the position of of dental implant plays an important role the crown abutment junction that is caj of the implant supported restoration should coincide with the caj of the adjacent tissue uh, adjacent teeth if the adjacent teeth periodontally is compromised caj of the implant should be deeply placed approx 3 mm from the caj mesial distal positioning the distance from the center of the uh, adjacent tooth should be 7 to 8 mm the correct positioning provides the proper contact point buccal lingual position 1 mm within the buccal bone to obtain the normal architecture or else the uh, the consideration at the stage of second in the second stage the uh, surgically uh, the papilla can be created by first locate the cover screw then horizontal incision is made on the palatal aspect of the cover screw then the vertical releasing incision or made on the buccal direction a semilunar bevel, uh, semilunar bevel incision is made from mesial aspect mesial to distal aspect and then this pellicle is rotated at 90 degree and placed in between the abutment and the uh, abutment and the natural teeth as shown in this diagram or else the papilla can be recreated with the help of just a t shaped incision uh, to create the ovate pontic can also be used for uh, creation of the interdental papilla this ovate pontic give a proper emergence profile gingival fibers the gingiva is consist of five types of fibers that is dento gingival which extends from the cervical cementum to the lamina propria of the gingiva alveolar gingival fibers these extend from the alveolar crest to the lamina propria uh, the circular fibers these circular fibers encircles the tooth and interferes with the other fiber dento periosteal fibers they extend from cementum to periosteum of the bone transeptal they uh, are accessory fibers extended between the interproximally between two adjacent teeth hard palate hard palate is mostly um, ortho keratinized masticatory mucosa firmly is attached to the underlying bone by lamina propria or by fibrous submucosa thickness of the masticatory mucosa the uh, in maxilla the average width of uh, gingiva is 4 mm width is smallest at the place of third molar which is 2.463 plus minus 0.87 mm mandible the smallest width at the buccal aspect of mandibular third molar can be seen which is 1.83 plus minus 0.97 mm other than third molar reg uh, region least buccal 
width is seen at the canine and first molar region, which is 2.6 mm. Greatest width at the lingual aspect of the first molar, that is 6.49 plus minus 1.53 mm. Specialized mucosa. The dorsum surface of the tongue is covered with thick keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, it has long papilla and minor salivary gland. The sulcus terminalis divide the uh, dorsal surface of the tongue into two parts, that is uh, anterior two-third and posterior one-third. The four, four types of papilla are present on the uh, dorsal surface of the tongue, which are fungiform, fun uh, filiform, fungiform, foliate, and circumvallate papilla. Fungiform papilla are the single pap uh, papilla scattered between the filiform papilla at the tip of the tongue. The filiform papilla covers the entire anterior surface of the tongue, which are cone-shaped and covered with the thick keratinized mucosa. They are abrasive in nature and causes the breaking of food opposing to the palate. Foliate papilla. These are present on the lateral aspect of the tongue and few test birds are present in foliate papilla. Circumvallate papilla are the 8 to 12 um, Papilla is present in front of the sulcus terminalis. Deep circular groove into which the minor salivary glands open. Lateral wall is non keratinized and it may contain the test buds. Arterial supply of the mucosa. Upper lip is supplied by superior labial artery. Uh, then the lower lip is supplied by inferior labial artery. Floor of the mouth is supplied by sublingual artery. Cheek is supplied by buccal, infraorbital, and posterior superior alveolar artery. Hard palate. Hard palate is supplied by major palatine, nasopalatine, and spinopalatine artery. Soft palate is supplied by minor palatine artery. And tongue, uh, uh, anterior two third of the tongue is supplied by deep lingual, and posterior one third is supplied by dorsal lingual artery. Nerve supply. The upper lip is supplied by infraorbital nerve. Then the upper gingiva is supplied by anterior, posterior, medial, superior alveolar branch of maxillary nerve. Lower gingiva is supplied by inferior alveolar branch of mandibular nerve. Lower lip is supplied by mental nerve uh, and buccal branch of mandibular nerve. Heart palate is supplied by greater palatine, uh, spinopalatine branch of maxillary nerve. Soft palate is supplied by lesser palatine branch of maxillary nerve tonsillar branch of glossopharyngeal nerve and check is supplied by infraorbital branch and superior alveolar branch of maxillary nerve. Age related changes in oral mucosa. The as age progresses, epithelial thinning occur, retipex become less prominent, decrease in cellular proliferation, loss of submucosal elastin and fat occurs, increased fibrotic connective tissue and degenerative ulcerations are alterations in the collagen. Clinically, uh, the dry, thin, soft mucosa surface can be seen. Loss of elasticity and stippling in which may pre predispose to the oral mucosa to trauma and infection, particularly when they are associated with the denture use. Wound healing and regeneration of the tissues are delayed. Classification of oral mucosa. The or house classified oral mucosa in three types. That class 1 is mucosa of normal density, 1 mm in thickness. Investing membrane is firm and ideal for basal set. Class 2A is a tissue with thin investing membrane and it is highly susceptible to irritation under the pressure. Class 2B is the mucous membrane is twice as thick as normal mucosa. Thin investing membrane is present. Class 3 is excessively flabby rich. It may require surgical correction. Prosthodontic consideration. Oral prosthesis must work in harmony with the remaining tissue that supports and surround them. The area of oral mucosa available to receive the load from the complete denture is limited when compared to the area of support in natural dentition. White computed the mean denture bearing area as 22.96 cm square in edentulous maxilla and 12.25 cm square in edentulous mandible. Biomechanics of oral mucosa. Oral mucosa exhibit high tolerance to intermediate rather than the continuous force. The biomechanical response of oral mucosa may be static response, which is instant response, and it is elastic. It depends upon the elasticity. Dynamic response is a time-dependent response. Uh, it is uh, dependent of viscosity or the permeability of the fluid component. 
volumetric response that is the compressibility or the portions ratio if the portion ratio is higher there is less deformation is seen and the surface intervention uh, interactive responses microscopic anatomy of the maxillary tissue and clinical consideration first is the hard palate the soft tissue covering the hard palate varies in thickness in different location anterior laterally the anterior laterally the submucosa of the hard palate is covered with adipose tissue and posterior laterally with the glandular tissue clinical consideration the tissue should be recorded in resting condition if they are displaced in the final impression the denture uh, cause this cause the unsitting of the denture alveolar crest mucosa covering the crest is firmly attached to the periosteum of the bone by connective tissue stratified squamous epithelium is thickly keratinized and outer surface of the ridge is mostly formed by the compact bone the compact bone and tightly bound mucosa makes the alveolar ridge best for prime as a primary stress bearing area palatal rugae raised area of the dense connective tissue in the anterior one third of the palate are uh, seen they should be recorded in non displaced uh, state otherwise it displaces the denture median papilla and uh, incisive papilla and median palatal raphe the submucosa is extremely thin and mucosal layer is almost in contact with the bone and tissue covering the median palatal raphe is non resident hence the little or no stress should be applied while the impression making otherwise the denture will rock on the center of the palate on vertical forces and this area is highly sensitive to um, that's why it causes pain so relief should be provided incisive papilla the submucosa in this area contain nasopalatine vessels and nerves that's why relief should be provided to prevent the pressure on nasopalatine vessels and nerves amylo notch submucosa is thick additional pressure can be applied this area is um, is present lateral to the pps clinical consideration denture should never extend beyond the hamular notch otherwise there is a dislodgement of the denture on wide opening microscopic anatomy of mandibular tissue and their clinical consideration buccal shelf area the part of basal set located posteriorly to the buccal frenum this mucous membrane covering the buccal shelf area is more loosely attached and less keratinized but it has uh, attachment for the buccinator uh, fibers of the buccinator muscle which are horizontally uh, arranged in the direction that's why this area is considered as primary stress bearing area crest of ridge of uh, crest of residual ridge similar to the upper ridge it, uh, in most of the patients the submucosa is loosely attached loosely attached to the bone over entire crest crest of residual ridge underlying bone of the crest is cancel and spongy hence relief should be provided or whole on the whole lower residual ridge alveolar alveolingual sulcus it extends uh, posteriorly from lingual frenum to the retromyeloid curtain the it is covered with thin non keratinized mucosa sub mucosa contain loose connective tissue fibers mixed with the elastic fibers hence mucosa allow free movement of the lip and cheek it is divided into three parts that is anterior one third uh, anterior posterior and uh, retromyeloid space anterior is lingual to premyeloid fossa and uh, middle is premyeloid fossa to the distal end of the myeloid ridge and posterior region is the end of myeloid ridge to retromyeloid curtain pear shaped part posterior end of the crest of lower ridge is called uh, is pear shaped part it is non keratinized fibers of buccinator temporal uh, and uh, must are attached hence it, this area never resolves hence it is considered as uh, considered as a primary stress bearing area in case of mandibular injury effect of complete denture impression technique on the oral mucosa the technique used in the impression making has important role in reaction of supporting tissue the complete denture in this um, article they selected 30 dentulous patient with average age of 52 and divided into three groups and three impression techniques were used that is minimum impression technique um, biting pressure technique and functional impression technique 
periodic examination is done every three weeks for the six months and after that uh, they check the uh, succinate dehydrogenase alkaline phosphatase exam, uh, enzyme and acid phosphatase enzyme and uh, the results were it results in the results where function impression technique appear to be most protect uh, protective to underlying supporting mucosa while those made with biting pressure technique may affect the tissues unfavorably and the minimal pressure technique was satisfactory but not to the same extent biological width and its prosthodontic configuration physiological dimensions of the junctional epithelium and connective tissue attachment above the alveolar crest is called as biological width biological width should not be violated during the crown preparation of the fpd and should be maintained within the normal range for the optimal success of the treatment violation of the biological width result in two responses that is gingival inflammation gingival recession with the bone loss um, and this leads to the failure of the prosthesis. Comparison of the tooth and implant support structure. The tooth, uh, tooth and bone junction is formed with cementum, bone and periodontium. And in case of the implant, it, the junction is formed because of the osseointegration. integration. The junctional epithelium is thin in case of the thick, thick in case of the tooth and thin in case of the implant. There are 13 groups of fibers present in between uh, in tooth and only parallel and circular fibers are seen in between implant and bone um, junction biological width is less in uh, tooth compared to the implant vascularity is greater in uh, tooth and it is less in implant junction tissue biotype is the thickness of gingiva in facial palatal direction the um, tissue biotype can be of two types that is thin and thick when uh, the tissue biotype is thin it is highly scallops soft tissue and bony counters are seen this biotype is delicate and friable and width of keratinized gingiva is narrow bone thickness is also thin which uh, which contributes to the dehiscence and fenestration and not small amount of uh, injury can result in gingiva recession while the thick biotype relatively flat and soft tissue and bony counters are seen dense and fibriotic uh, soft tissue texture the width of keratinized uh, at attached gingiva is more uh, this bone is thick and uh, normally it leads to formation of the pocket consideration while the uh, prosthodontic consideration in case of the tooth preparation the margin should be uh, prepared uh, prepare supra gingivally if the biotype is thin otherwise the if they are prepared sub gingivally there is visibility of the metal can be seen and uh, gingival care should be taken to avoid the injury to the soft tissue in thin biotype retraction of gingiva can be accomplished more comfortably in thick biotype Gingival biotype and implant consideration thick biotypes are associated with thick bony plates Thin biotypes are associated with thin bony plates, possibility of significant resorptions, which may have an impact on aesthetic. The loss of peri-implant structure, thin translucent tissue over the implant. Appearance of the grayish uh, layer can be seen, especially in the facial plate is lost and implant threads are visible, as seen in, his, in this diagram. In these cases, further bone and soft tissue grafting procedure may be necessary. In thick tissue biotype, immediate placement of the implant can be done. Real life effect. Oral mucosa contains resilient submucosa that permits compressibility and acts as a hydraulic cushion. Complete denture rests on oral mucosa, which is displaceable and compressible. This is described by Hanau as resiliency like effect or real life effect. This effect can be utilized for fabrication of well fitted denture. Compensation of real life effect to achieve the stability. Uh, in its first is the preparation of the mouth for prosthesis. The oral mucosa uh, tissue recovery time is 24 hours. That's why the uh, in young patients and maybe several days in old patient. That that's why the uh, denture should not be worn 24 hours prior to the impression making. For the impression making, various techniques can be used like mucostatic ZOE, uh, anterior window technique in case of flabberage, and escape holes are made in the train. The centric relation should be recorded um, with the minimum pressure technique and the teeth should be arranged on the Hanau because Hanau stated that um, 
So now stated that the rest resiliency like effect more the instrument stimulate the mandibular movement. Trying during the trying, the mucosa under the man, uh, maxillary denture is displaced in superior direction, and mucosa under the mandibular is displaced in the inferior direction. Results in premature contact of the distal incline of the mandibular posterior cusp to the mesial incline of the mandibular tip. Therefore, uh, the selective grinding procedure should be done. Denture insertion and then the follow-up to avoid the hyperplasia of the reduced overextended flange and complete. To avoid the hyperplasia, reduce the overextended flange or completely remove it. Hyperplastic tissue can be managed by massage with the ball of finger. Effect of complete denture on oral mucosa. The thickness of the epithelium and stratum corneum decreases. Uh, the flattening of the basement membrane occurs. Decrease in keratinization under the complete denture when compared with the normal mucosa without a denture. Keratinization under the complete denture. The degree of keratinization is inversely proportional to amount of the time the dentures are worn. Age, it is not related. Uh, smoking increases the keratinization and removal of the denture at night also increases keratinization. Effect of complete denture on oral mucosa. The lesions of oral mucosa associated with the denture, uh, wearing of denture may represent acute or chronic reactions. Acute reactions include traumatic ulcer, allergic reactions, acute infections. Chronic reactions include denture stomatitis, fiber dysplasia. Reaction to the constitute of denture based material can occur or mechanical injury due to the denture. Sequelae of denture wearing on oral mucosa. Direct sequelae include denture stomatitis, flabby rich, denture, uh, denture irritation, hyperplasia, angular stomatitis, traumatic ulcers, oral cancer, altered test perception, burning mouth syndrome, gagging, residual resorption. Oral galvanic current, periodontal diseases, and caries in abutment, or indirect sequelae could be atrophy of the maxilla, change in nutritional status, or change in masticatory function. Traumatic ulcer, these are caused by denture injury, heals within 7 to 10 days without a scar, commonly seen within 1 to 2 days after the insertion of the lower denture. Causes may be the overextension of the flange or any rough surface area under the denture. Clinical features are small, small painful, irregular shaped lesions uh, covered with grayish, delicate necrotic membrane as surrounded by inflammatory hollow. Treatment include correction of underlying causes and relief of the flange, removal of any rough surface or tiny sequestration. Epilus fissuratum, the dental, it is also called as denture injury tumor. It is a reaction to the chronic ill-fitting denture or hyperplasia of the tissue at denture border. Single or multiple folds of hyperplastic tissue can be seen. It is more common in mandible than in maxilla. Treatment includes surgical excision followed by fabrication of new denture. This is the article in which uh, treatment of uh, epilus fissuratum is done with the help of liquid nitrogen. A patient come, uh, came to the hospital with the chief complaint of fibrous overgrowth surrounding the borders of ill-fitting maxillary denture. It grew in size uh, since past two months and patient complains of pain. Followed by uh, the treatment done by liquid nitrogen, followed by liquid anesthesia, the uh, liquid nitrogen is applied. Uh, liquid nitrogen oxide was applied with cryopro and the lesion was exposed directly to three consecutive freeze thought technique for 30 seconds each. Additional two more cryosurgery sessions were performed at the interval of one month. These were the post one month post operative photographs. The liquid nitrogen hence can be used effectively in deliberating geriatric patient at his at it has the boon of achieving excellent hemostatic good hemo, uh, healing and minimal post operative edema and pain. Inflammatory papillary hyperplasia. The numerous closely arranged red edematous papillary projections can be seen commonly on the heart palate. They uh, occur due to ill-fitting denture, uh, wearing of the denture 24 hours or poor oral hygiene. Treatment is surgical excision, new denture and rebasing of the old denture. This is a case report of a patient with denture hyperplasia. A 70-year-old patient uh, came for a new pair of denture on clinical examination. The denture, um, den 
fracture hyperplasia was seen the patient was hypertensive and not willing for surgical treatment hence non surgical treatment was uh, given to him this was his denture uh, on the denture the uh, vacuum chamber was seen and you can see the hyperplasia in the area of the vacuum chair chamber once a week the upper denture was relined with zinc oxide eugenol paste for the four weeks in each session the paste was removed and replaced with the new layer on fourth week the lesion had reduced substantially on fifth week the denture was relined with uh, fast set polymethyl metacrylate or on sixth week the fabrication of maxillary mandibular denture was started and these were the post operative photographs denture stomatitis infection prevails in patient wearing the denture day and night and infection disappears if denture was not worn factors predisposing is uh, systematic factors are old age diabetes mellitus nutritional deficiency malignancy local factors are dentures uh, stom uh, xerostomia diet and smoking these are the photographs of denture stomatitis treatment includes um, oral and denture hygiene correction of denture wearing habit ask the patient to remove the denture after and be, uh, the meal and wash them throughout uh, thoroughly with soap water and rinse with water massage the area ask the patient to keep the denture in 0.2 to 2% chlorhexidine solution local therapy can be applied that is nystatin cream 3 times a day for 10 to 14 days or maximum of 4 weeks flabbed ridge etiology could be loose uh, fitting dentures load concentrated in anterior region um, rapid ridge resorption or combination syndrome that is maxillary complete denture opposing mandibular distal extension partial denture management include conservative the tissue rest that is 8 hours every day for few days soft tissue management include massage to stimulate and recover the blood supply and use of mouthwash modification of denture by flange and oxyloosal adjustment or tissue conditioning prosthetic management includes uh, impression with the uh, window technique centric occlusion record and occlusal form and posterior teeth are arranged in neutral zone less buccolingual width of the teeth surgical correction includes augmentation of the ridge management of flabby ridge using liquid nitrogen supported denture a patient came to the clinic uh, with uh, maxillary edentulous a uh, patient come to the clinic with history of wearing maxillary complete denture for 5 years by intraoral examination or complete edentulous maxillary arch with flabby tissue extending in the anterior region and partially edentulous mandibular uh, arch can be seen that is class 2 a vacuum hit pressed polyethylene sheet of 1 mm thickness was adapted on the master cast and the sheet was made 2 mm short of the sulcus and was not extended in, in the pps area this sheet was incorporated in denture at the time of packing on recall visit appointment the 1 mm thick sheet was removed and it is replaced with the 0.5 mm of the thin, uh, 0.5 mm thin sheet and the space created by it was filled with glycerin this was done by making the two holes in the buccal flange area of the denture and injecting glycerin through the holes and checking the vertical dimension simultaneously the holes were sealed using the self cure resin as shown in this figure you can see the denture base the yellow color is the glycerin and the black is the polyethylene sheet and the denture was delivered to the patient in this condition at first recall visit the patient complained of floating filling after uh, the 3 months recall appointment the patient was comfortable using the denture and denture was well maintained angular chilitis it involves the infection of the lip commissurals majority of cases are associated with candida candida usually usually seen in edentulous patient etiology could be the decreased vertical dimensions denture stomatitis or nutritional deficiency treatment involves nystatin cream for 2 weeks drug induced hyperplasia a uh, drug can be responsible for the hyperplasia of the gingiva which include fin um, anti convulsion fin phenytoin immunosuppressant cyclosporin a or calcium channel blocker nifedipine or verapamil or dentiazine the treat uh, clinical features are mostly seen in buccal gingiva than compared to lingual mandible is most affected than uh, maxilla the duration of the drug administration for the maximal growth 
the uh, as the drug is discontinued the inflammation reduces the accumulation of dental plaque is also associated with the gingival inflammation more severe in the young patient compared to the old patient treatment involves reduce the plaque then consider the consider changing the medication with the alternative drug and periodontal surgical treatment involves severe gingival enlargement can be removed with gingival resection radiation induced oral mucositis initial symptom uh, symptomatic erythema solitary white elevated discomatous patch can be seen painful to contact large painful contagious pseudomembranous lesion develop with association with the dysphagia and decrease oral intake the non keratinized mucosa is most affected one the most common sites are labial buccal soft palate floor of the mouth and ventral surface of the tongue oral lesion usually heal within 2 to 3 weeks management include pain control nutritional support oral decontamination and papillization of the dry mouth and management of the oral bleeding burning mouth syndrome uh, it can be a sequela of the denture wearing or it can be because of menopause uh, diabetes nutritional deficiency oral thrush dry mouth or acid reflux the burning mouth sensation affects the tongue palate gingiva buccal and labial mucosa and posterior part of the oral cavity dry or sore mouth or tingling numb sensation throughout the mouth and the tongue may occur a bitter or metallic taste is present especially common in women during or after menopause oral candid uh, treatment involves um, oral antifungal medications any irritation uh, caused by sharp or broken tooth should be removed Ele um, eliminate the mouthwash chewing gum tobacco or any acidic liquid like uh, soft drinks coffee or juices for 2 weeks to see if there if there is any improvement try a different brand of toothpaste if any medications are reported to cause the burning sensation in the mouth ask for physician oral cancer in denture wearers uh, it is also associated with heavy alcohol plus tobacco use chronic uh, causes of denture irritation hyperplasia when pressure ulcerations are developed irritation from the microbial products along with the lymphadenopathy stimulate the neoplastic changes regular recall is required sore spot if do not heal we can suspect for malignancy these are the systemic diseases affecting oral mucosa like pernicious anemia is associated with red buffy tongue diabetes mellitus is associated with oral candidiasis and dry mouth aids uh, in case of aids you can see a uh, kaposi sarcoma that is the hemorrhagic spots on the gingiva and in in case of jaundice a pale um, pale um, oral mucosa can be seen these are uh, this is the article regarding uh, oral mucosal changes a sign of covid 19 it is a cross sectional study uh, in this uh, this cross sectional study was performed in 663 patient with covid 19 at the uh, field hospital in madrid in in april 2020 78 patient had um, changes in oral mucosa the most common manifestation was transient u shaped papilla uh, lingual papillitis present in 35 patient 20 of this patient also had tongue tongue swelling then the glossitis with patchy depapillarization and characteristic characteristic inflammatory pattern of the tongue was observed in 12 patient and fungal culture was performed in all cases and was negative these are the uh, depapillarization seen on the tongue o other oral manifestation were aphthous stomatitis which and mucositis conclusion it is of prime importance to understand the histology of the oral mucosa at it hold high significance in prosthodontic rehabilitation and success different areas of oral mucosa exhibit different structure behavior pattern and should be treated within their limitations to achieve the best aesthetic phonetics and most importantly the functional ability these are my references